So after a remarkably busy weekend, which is a bit counterproductive to what I like to normally do on the weekend, we're back! Yay! I do have a subject for today, and one I think is quite fascinating. Before that, there's a new video on Moisky Live, and in a rejig of my live streams, I will be streaming Euro Truck Simulator 2 on a Megon Plays. I might change that to Moisky Plays. Who knows? Later tonight at 8.30pm GMT, links to both down below. Now the subject of today's video is Kira Bell. Who is Kira Bell, you ask? This is Kira Bell. Kira Bell started gender reassignment at Tavistock and Portman NHS. Now this particular clinic is now being sued over concerns that it gave experimental drugs to children as young as 12. Kira Bell has now stopped transitioning and argues that the staff did not challenge her views. It has been argued by many, including the judge in this case, that it is plainly arguable the clinic was acting unlawfully. This to me is quite interesting for a number of very important reasons, all of which we'll get to soon, but one I want to focus on for a moment is there is a surge, a minority surge at that where people want to simply change gender identity or be declared trans but not challenged over this statement, forgetting how serious and genuine it is to be trans and then conflating it with a mood ring, which is a tad counterproductive. To those people, go back to the other end of the bus and lick the windows like you're supposed to. You are not helpful to any discussion when it comes to the rights of trans people and helping those that are trans get the help they need by ensuring that it is the correct help. The Tavistock and Portman NHS Trust runs the very first gender clinic in London. It is being sued over the concern that the drugs they gave to children without proper consent were too powerful. Kira Bell in this story started reassignment at that clinic when she was a teenager, after which she felt certain thoughts that, that to be honest, required more help. During this phase, Kira Bell was prescribed hormone blockers, which halted the development of her female body after just three one-hour appointments. We could all sit here all day and argue whether or not that is anywhere near enough to truly ascertain whether someone requires hormone blockers. I should say, because I've been very clear on it from the offset, hormone blockers I am vehemently against giving because they're typically known as puberty blockers or puberty inhibitors, which postpone puberty in children. The argument I've made in the past, and I'm going to repeat it now for everyone present, is that you are still making a child make an adult decision. The process of puberty will still have to happen. Postponing it doesn't change that. You are merely giving a child more time to be a child, nothing more. In fact, if anything, you're making it more difficult for the child. I should, however, say, when it comes to treating things like endometriosis or prostate cancer, these particular drugs are perfectly fine because the inhibiting of things like testosterone. But when it comes to children, no. With that in mind, I want to now go back to Kira Bell who is now waiting to see if she has fertility issues following the drugs and the claims that she should not have been rushed into treatment because children cannot give adequate consent. They really can't, which baffles me why this is still an argument. On YouTube, there are a number of people who are themselves trans. I would argue most, if not all, would argue against puberty blockers because they think it's right a child firstly grow up and then make an adult decision. Changes to a fully developed adult body rather than that to a child. Mr. Justice Supperstone, who is the judge in this case, has said that it is plainly arguable the clinic was acting unlawfully and has given permission for the high-profile trial in the divisional by July. Kira Bell believes that this case will bring attention to the fact children are given treatment without being properly informed of the lifelong consequences. I know someone's now going to reference the boy in Texas, I believe, whose mother was trying to transition him. Yes, can't really compare the two because your system's a little different to the United Kingdom. This, to me, is a huge step in a good direction. 
because it needs to be spoken of more and more needs to be done to address these kind of issues. Kira Bell is now in a very odd position because having transitioned and for so long, Kira Bell being now female instead of male has issues when it comes to something as simple as the bathroom and the fact that Kira for the most part doesn't really fit in as male or female and simply being stuck between the two sexes something which is a quote directly from Kira Bell. In this case, Kira Bell went so far as to have operations to remove breast tissue and other such procedures not... I'm not going to name the last one. The intention now is for Kira to try and reverse this process as best as possible. That's going to be expensive, but I do hope and wish you all the best. I don't like the idea that you might be considered a guinea pig in something that needs to be truly spoken of and addressed properly. A few of the friends I do have that are trans have had issues in the United Kingdom even though we have parity of esteem, there are not enough experts or services available to those who are trans, who are trying to fully understand who they are, so they know where they're going. It is a real struggle, and one that I hope, given more money and more time, we can only wait for the budget to come out next week, maybe the week after, for us to know whether or not the NHS is going to get more money, and then we need to wait to find out if the NHS is actually going to invest in more mental health services, which is something I think truly needs to be done. I say this as somebody who had at one point looked into seeing a psychiatrist after a certain loss, only to realise there aren't many, and the ones that do exist are very expensive, excluding the NHS ones that are impossible to get appointments with. Turns out it's much easier to talk to a brick wall, mostly because when you decide to punch the wall, it doesn't call the police which is quite handy. As a final thing for Kira Bell, her claim is that the Tavistock therapists did not adequately warn her of the symptoms ahead, and that because the female hormones had been flushing through her body, and then suddenly a curtain came down on it, it was like going cold turkey, and it wasn't something anyone should experience because of how much it hurt. There are campaigners currently supporting Kira Bell's court battle with them indicating a number of young people regret a sex change, which is on the rise. There is a new charity called the Detransition Advocacy Network, which has been set up to help them. Its founder, Charlie Evans, was born female but lived as a man for nearly a decade before accepting her birth sex, with her saying that she has been contacted by hundreds of young adults, some only 19 or 20 who claim the treatment has not solved their problems. In 2009-2010, 40 girls under 18 were referred to doctors for gender treatment in England. In 2017 to 2018, the number has risen to 1,806. Over the same period, annual referrals for boys increased from 57 to 713. This is a statement that more money needs to be invested in ensuring those people are able to best understand themselves with the right resources to help them. Instead of just saying, yeah, you're trans, there you go, take some drugs, here, go on, there you go, you go on your way, you're good. There are no consequences. It's not like there is a plethora of studies that would indicate otherwise. And let's not forget the regret, because that's been something I've discussed a number of times on this channel. I think I spoke about somebody a few weeks back that transitioned three times. When challenged about this and asked for a statement, Tavistock and Portman NHS Foundation Trust has said... We welcome the opportunity to talk about the service and to stand up for our dedicated staff who put the best interests of the young people and families at the heart of their practice. I know some of you might be surprised, but they're not going to say, yeah, but they're all mental, yo, because that might be considered a tad rude and insensitive and unprofessional as heck. Now, as we are done here, I genuinely want to know what you think about this. Many people have started detransitioning and it's become very common which tells me the services available at present are inadequate and failing. It needs to be addressed, and resources need to be made available to truly help people. I'm very much aware of the waiting list for some people just to get into certain therapies. It is unacceptable. And to be honest, something does need to be done about it. I could draw a very minor comparison in that for me to get a doctor's appointment, I would have to book four weeks in advance and I won't meet the doctor face to face, it'll be a five minute phone call. Damning statement, I think so. If I don't see you tonight over on Omega on Plays, I hope you'll have a fantastic Monday. And thank you all for listening.